Welcome to an introduction to JT6M Part 4, The Art of Decoding. Your initial success with JT6M could easily be determined by a combination of the correct settings for your working conditions and to some extent your technique. By the end of this section I am confident that you will be able to decode signals which you previously thought to be impossible. First of all, let's take a look at the settings. If WSJT is not running, please run it now. We need to take a look at the basic decoder settings. In the lower half of the centre part of the WSJT window are a set of values and checkboxes. There is also a default button. Pressing this default button returns WSJT to a base set of values, which are a good starting point. These values would be S at minus 10, clip at 0, toll at 200, and the three adjoining checkboxes unchecked. Understanding the interplay which exists between these various parameters is the key to your success with JT6M. We will investigate them now. The following exercise requires that you have downloaded the sample waves that are available from the WSJT website. If you have not yet installed them, please do so now. In this exercise, we are going to load into WSJT wave files which were automatically saved, resulting from a setting which we covered in a previous section. Please now go to File, Open, and navigate to the JT6M subdirectory. Locate the Alpha Alpha 9 Mike Yankee wave file and load it into WSJT. As you will see, in the graphical area, both the yellow and the green lines are fairly static apart from a significant peak which is in the middle. And also, WSJT has automatically decoded a message 9 Mike Yankee 73 AA9MF2. Now, of course, we know that AA9MF2 is not a proper call sign, therefore, we need to investigate a little further any hidden messages that may exist within this data. Before we attempt to hunt, for any hidden data that may exist within this 30 second period, which has not appeared as a result of the automatic decode, let us take a look at JT6M's sensitivity. By default, sensitivity, the S setting, is at minus 10. Using your mouse buttons, left and right will adjust this value. Using your left mouse button, please adjust this value to 0 dB. This represents the noise floor for WSJT which we set in the previous section. Now press the Erase button, followed by the Decode button, which forces WSJT to decode. And you will see that the previously blank graphical area has now returned the familiar display. But the Decode area is empty. WSJT has failed to decode any data with the sensitivity set at 0 dB. Now with your right mouse button adjust the sensitivity to minus 1 dB therefore increasing the sensitivity and force a decode again by pressing the decode button. You'll see there are no changes. Adjust to minus 2 and press decode. No change. Adjust to minus 3 and press decode and you'll see suddenly that there is some data appearing in the decode window. And if you look closely, you will see that the sensitivity that this message was decoded at is minus 3 dB. So now we are beginning to see some data appearing simply by adjusting the sensitivity of the decoder. Continue now adjusting and decoding. You will see at minus 4 there is no change. At minus 5 dB the quality of the decoded message has increased. We already know from the file name that one of the call signs we are looking for is AA9MY. 
MS procedure allows us to patch together partial messages which are received in the same period. We know from the file name that we are looking for the call sign AA9MY and you can see, be it though split into two halves and are two halves reversed, we do indeed have the full call sign AA9MY. So simply by increasing the sensitivity already we are seeing an improvement in the quality of the decoded data. Now continue decoding, minus 6 dB. You will now see that the decode has provided a little more information. Continue increasing the sensitivity and decoding. At minus 7 dB we now see the familiar message that we saw when we first decoded this particular WAV file. Continue now increasing the sensitivity. No change at minus 8, no change at minus 9, no change at minus 10. At minus 11, something completely different has happened. What has happened is that it has decoded the same information again, however WSJT has also attempted to provide an average message based on the information that it has decoded. In this instance, the average message is of no practical use to us. Please continue increasing the sensitivity by 1 dB and then forcing a decode and observe the results in the decode window. You will now see that there is beginning to appear a significant amount of what we call garbage. And this is the result of having the sensitivity adjusted too high in combination with WSJT's filters set too wide. And we will cover this issue shortly. Now, let's return our sensitivity to minus 10 dB, which we can do easily by pressing the default button. Now press Erase and force a decode, and this will bring us back to our starting point at the beginning of this exercise. Next, what we will do is we will force WSJT to decode not the 30 second period but much smaller swathes of data. By placing the cursor in the graphical area it doesn't matter whether it is on the graphical blue and green section or in amongst the yellow and green lines. Simply left clicking anywhere within the graphical area it will force WSJT to attempt to decode a small area of data and in some instances you will see garbage appearing as in here for example this data is completely meaningless but as we reach a point where there is a higher quality of synchronization which is represented by the peaking yellow line you'll see messages beginning to appear and indeed as I continue to move the cursor in a rightwards direction at a certain point we actually have the desired message in its entirety appear. As the sensitivity of JT6M is increased the decoder looks more deeply into the noise in order to find useful data. The negative effect of this is that it becomes increasingly more difficult to visually separate useful data from garbage and can become quite tiring on the eyes. It is therefore desirable to maintain WSJT at a sensitivity, at a balance which is comfortable for you as an operator to deal with the quantity of information which appears. Well it seems that once again the 10 minute limit has overtaken me so this section is going to be split off into a further 10 minute time slot. Thank you for your attention. I hope this presentation is being helpful. Bye for now.